Дорогие друзья, Friends, сегодня у нас с вами, с моей точки зрения, сущностное Сергей Степашин и Александр Жуков. As a moderator, I would like to provide some background information. Business and management education is evolving, and the public seems to be increasingly aware that business education is in demand, is needed, because it is an important profession. Very often, people believe that uh, the economy or management uh, is just an appendic, appendage to uh, uh, the politics, but actually it includes uh, management psychology, management uh, law and management economy with a focus on behavioral aspects. Uh, we need to train people who will be able to do that. We have about 120, 130 schools, uh, business schools, uh, or management faculties, uh, Russian-based MBA programs uh, are uh, developing, and they're also put on the list of the top ones around the world. But we don't have it incorporated in our law or in the law on education. MBA is the higher a master's degree, and it is uh, considered as uh, additional education, and uh, there are issues when Russian diplomas are cla uh, classified and recognized abroad. So these are issues, but there have also been a lot of achievements. During the pandemic, there was a serious threat to those achievements. They were challenged, and we know that many business schools around the world almost uh, stopped their training or went completely online. So what is the situation in Russia? And I would like to ask this question to the deputy chairman of the, um, the, the presidium of the National Accreditation Council for Business and Management Education. We have the uh, CCI Russia, Association of Russian Banks, uh, Business Russia, the Pillar of Russia, or Apora Rasi, and the Russian Union of Industrialists and Entrepreneurs. I'd like to ask the head of this organization, Mr. Zhukov, a key high-level statesman. So for almost a year, we've been living in under the conditions of a pandemic. What is happening to Russia's uh, business and management education? What are the key challenges? What are the key peculiarities that you can identify? Thank you, Mr. Mesiyadov. Indeed, our economy in general, just like uh, other economies, has seen drastic, uh, difficult, drastic changes and major difficulties, and that applies to education too. Since March, all the universities uh, are uh, have been online. There was a period when we wanted to go back offline, but it didn't last long. Everyone returned online very often, including business schools and the entire system of business education. We had to employ new methods of operations. Overall, Speaking of our business education, management education, it has been able to handle that test despite the challenges uh, the entire system faced. And overall, I believe, all the other universities uh, seem to be able to rise to that challenge. But the crisis itself forced us to introduce many changes much faster than without it. Both universities and business schools 
очень быстро закупали дополнительное оборудование. Had it not been for the pandemic, they would only buy that equipment maybe in a decade, and everyone had to use broadband connection. They picked and employed new online platforms. They had to readjust their interface, their communication with the students. And on almost all universities, business schools, training was able to continue. This is the key takeaway. Most of corporate training programs went online. There's been some quality leap in that. It's been driven by crisis, but that is now a reality. Specifically, I'd like to mention advanced retraining programs, these are MBA, DBA, high and medium level managers. Actually, I got a similar degree, but 30 years ago. What's Particular about these programs, it's not just about education. Education is extremely important, but networking is much more important. They're always in contact, they talk to each other. And it's really difficult to do that while you're online. Without it, management degrees definitely are not uh, do not have the same worth. But what is a pleasant surprise to me is that even amid this difficult situation, our business schools have been able to come up with a hybrid format. They kept some networking programs. Um, and their networking advantages and combine them with online tools. I also studied some global experience. I believe that our schools and universities were on par with their uh, foreign peers and some of our schools even performed better than the world-acclaimed universities and uh, business schools. Thank you so much, Mr. Shilkov. I fully subscribe to what you said. I talked to some of the deans of the leading business schools in Europe, and they say they, do, they are fully online. While here in Russia, we have a hybrid format, both online and offline. So you're the president of the Presidium of the National Accreditation Council for Business and Management Education. That's abbreviated as NASDOBR. It's a public education, public interest organization. Uh, you have volunteers uh, who work there. So in your hat as the president of that organization, how do you feel a year into pandemic? First off, I'd like to say that the previous meeting was held in the normal times uh, under the ordinary circumstances. Indeed, our uh, council unites uh, banks, major corporates, and I believe that this organization was able to adjust to this new environment. And our goal over the past two years has been to finalize its documents to register a new industry-specific uh, Council on uh, Law and uh, the Economy. Despite the challenges posed by the pandemic, we've been able to finalize that process. And again, it's a industry, inter industry council. So usually managers are trained for one specific sector. 
but by definition a manager should not just focus on one industry. It's definitely a profession that could be applied to any industry and it's great that we finally have this new council for law and economy and it's uh, an achievement. It's the pinnacle of the work that the NASDOBR, that our organization was doing. So we've done a lot of uh, online work, we've done, we've accredited some of the degrees in uh, business administration, we've done that in close contact with the government. I believe this is extremely important. By and large, I believe that our organization has been able to strike a fine balance to mix both online and offline, working with experts almost across the board. Do I get it right, Mr. Shukov? Do you really believe that currently the central centerpiece of the efforts of this organization is working to come up with professional standards. And the fact that you have now registered a new council on law and economy, this is uh, really a leap forward. Yes, we believe this is a major step forward in enhancing our education. Actually, we, it incorporates the operations of about 40 work similar centers and organizations and and definitely we'll have a council on professional qualifications of uh, managers. Well, they'll run in parallel, maybe we'll merge them. But that council has its own history and perhaps the new council will inherit something. We set up the working bodies of that new council of professional qualifications and definitely we have top-notch experts on board. They represent top corporates, banks, Association of Russian Banks, top lawyers, notary officials, notary public, and it includes key experts in law, and they will definitely have to come up with those standards, uh, education standards, and these education standards will enable our teachers to train top uh, specialists in law, and that is uh, that is the key element uh, that drives efficiency of uh, both the government and uh, the private sector. That's something that we really need. Well, as a follow-up question, today, deputy head of that council on qualifications, on your deputy, is Sergei Stepashin. Let us turn to uh, Mr. Stepashin and ask a couple of questions to him. Mr. Stepashin, unfortunately, right now, is uh, on a flight to Vladivostok, Russia's Far East. He's not able to be here with us, but he responded to some of the questions so that he could be part of this debate and this conversation about the future of Russia's business and management education. Let us give the floor to Mr. Stepashin right now. So we asked it, it's a pre-recorded interview. Now, as you know, the National Council of Professional Qualifications recently approved or rather registered Dedicated Council on Education and 
on, sorry, on economy and law. Well, actually, there were a lot of doubts. Do we need to combine law and management? These are two big areas to be, so to speak, areas of research and science. What is your take on that? Well, it's pretty obvious to me, uh, self-explanatory. I've worked uh, in government, I've worked as prime minister and as the chairman of uh, the Association of Russian Lawyers. Uh, it's pretty clear to me. Let's take an example from Russia's, Russia in the 1990s. Definitely political economic decisions were more important, privatization and so on. And then we adjusted our law to that and we provided the right buffer legal cushions so that these people would not be jailed for what they did. That's just an example of what it was like in the 1990s. You first took an economic decision and then you adjusted the law accordingly. Anyway, that's a paradox. And again, that was a paradox. It was enshrined in our... And that is, runs counter to our constitution. And that could also have a, a negative effect on motivation. So that could be a moral hazard too. So what we have now envisaged, I believe, is extremely important, efficient and viable. My second question as a follow-up. This council on the economy and law will have to list those standards which we will need to create from scratch and which will, some of them we will, need, will be needed to revise. Do you think there should be one standard or list of standards that we should start straight away? Well, first of all, we need to come up with the finite list of those standards. And again, we shouldn't do it in a hurry. And as I said, we need to talk to our experts. We need to make everyone get their voice out. Uh, you have the same faces uh, in the media. We need, on the contrary, to give the floor to a broad range of experts, those with practical experience, those who work out there in the field. Then we come up with a list of standards, and then we put them up for public debate. And again, not just within our council. We need to have a down-to-earth discussion. I don't want to mention any specific standards on the fly. No, I don't want to give any ad hoc uh, assessments. It wouldn't be a, a proper thing for me to do. В ближайшее время СПК Наздобр по управлению праву предстоит the council will have to look into professional accreditation in a very close way. And that's uncharted borders for us. Uh, but I know that the Association of Russian Lawyers has been engaged in it for 10 years, for a decade now. So you've been, you know what professional accreditation is like. Can you give us your take? Do we really need this kind of activity? Well, start from the end, definitely we need that. As for our experience, again, it was our own initiative. Mr. Kutafin. And Dmitry Medvedev, who was president back then in 2008, they had a meeting. And Mr. Medvedev is head of our uh, steering board, the board of our board of trustees. So we we sit we sat together and started looking at uh, our law education. Back then. We had more than 200, uh, sorry, more than 1,200 universities and colleges uh, where people could be trained as lawyers. While in the Soviet Union, we only had 55. 
So you have like a garage, you know, or a one-story building that says uh, law faculty. This is why we issued a decree in 2009 and a dedicated commission was set up to look at the quality of education. So we cleared some of that space. I'm sure it could shrink even further. So right now, out of 1,200, we only have uh, 500. Everyone liked that. And the Ministry of Education supported us. And then we took a second decision. Okay, let's now praise degrees. We have a dedicated council. And again, I'm in charge of it. We looked at the degrees of 35 institutions. Some were dismissed. And we rely on the expertise, on the public. People, people get prepared, they do thorough analysis, and we just we, we don't rely on administrative leverage. So I believe that our experience will be very much needed as part of this new Council on Law and Economy. Thank you. As an expert in management education, I often hear that uh, institutions need new laws, new bylaws. They say we need new laws or even regulations, maybe, rules and regulations on business education. So we have a law on education. Uh, uh, as Alexander Dmitrievich mentioned, so he has vast experience in the parliament. As for me, I worked for the Supreme Council in the State Duma, and I was quite careful about laws. Yeah, so the law, I, I am not talking about uh, uh, legal business uh, education. The less laws we have, uh, the better for the country. So, well, when the speaker would say so, during the reporting period, we adopted two to three thousand laws. But do you yourself know all the laws? If uh, they are enforced if people know about them. So it shouldn't be um, like a must. So let's work uh, within our council. Let's have a look at uh, whether the law is efficient. We can follow up with an amendment so we can uh, produce new laws. So it's essential not just to adopt laws, but to enforce uh, them. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Stepashin. One closing question. So you began by saying that the you know, law and management go together well and they are important at the level of the state and uh, corporations. But what would you believe? As for the university curricula for law, uh, do you need to have some elements uh, related to management and vice versa? In uh, curricula on the management, uh, should there be some basics of law? So, well, you asked a wonderful question and you managed to answer it. Of course, otherwise our lawyers work for the legal aesthetics, knowing lighting well, and our managers uh, will make mistakes and uh, will seal a little bit. So, uh, somebody who worked for security services and uh, the ministry of the interior. Some people tend to be very passive. And the results of 2020, so, and Alexander Dmitrich, who worked for the budgetary committee, he knows it very well that 1.3 trillion uh, rubles in the budget uh, weren't spent because people would send. Uh, I would not do anything. Otherwise, I could go to prison. So, well, let's 
это все законно. APEC and for Winter Olympics in Sochi. So what uh, our president said, so we have the counting chamber, uh, we have the managers, and I would like to order you to work directly. If you have your contractors, yeah, so we actually moved to the manual control mode. So the project were successful. It was good, but in terms of life, management and construction practice uh, of course, it's not the way it should be. So we need some legal foundation for those who focus on practical works, including management, uh, to help and protect people. And I think for your academy, Renepper, it's very relevant as a topic. Well, of course, I think I am done with uh, my questions and uh, uh, our agenda is limited. So thank you so very much for your answers and for your agreement to take part in our um, uh, shooting. So I hope we are successful. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks again, Mr. Stepashin. And now let's continue our talk with Alexander Zhukov. And uh, from my side, I would like to mention that when Mr. Sergei Stepashin covered the challenging topic of the correct uh, accounting statements when working on the national economy projects, uh, I remember that the leading corporate uh, corporate institutions and business universities think about the special training program called RegTech, regulatory technologies, combining the opportunities of AI, which can uh, generalize the existing statutory act and uh, within the framework of the problem can quickly update to implement projects without manual control. Let's hope that our physicians and mathematicians together with our educationalists manage to do it uh, shortly. And let's get back to our discussion with Alexander Dmitrievich. I would like to ask Mr. Shukov a question. So if when you have trainings for analysts and managers, uh, you would normally have a question. Uh, please uh, name us uh, three strategic questions you will resolve. So as for Anas Dober, um, uh, target number one was the council, as mentioned by Mr. Stepashin. But if you would check the outcomes of the last year and your prospect for the future, uh, of the multilateral uh, activities by Nasdobr, what two are the priority areas you would identify? Well, first of all, I, I'm really happy that Mr. Stepashin agreed to join our council because he is not just an outstanding uh, government official and head of the uh, lawyers association, but also a person with huge uh, management experience in very different areas. So he mentioned his activities in the Ministry of the Interior and the counting chamber, and he used to be um, the chairman of the government, and we worked together in the State Duma, and when he was the chairman of the counting uh, chamber, and I believe that his contribution uh, into the work of the council will be really uh, great. 
because it's essential to have that fine combination of the management uh, solutions on the one hand and uh, business and organizational solutions on the other uh, hand. So he mentioned challenges in statements uh, for the government purchases and tax affairs. So if you know the tax code, it begins with dozens of pages uh, that list laws which made amendments to the tax code. So it was completely reworked. So maybe artificial intelligence uh, helps us to guide ourselves uh, through the tax code. So for the public purchases, it's really a challenge for a manager to meet all uh, the requirements of uh, law and by laws. Yeah, and sure. if you allow uh, a violation, then you could be subject to, uh, to criminal penalties. Uh, you need a vast practice. But uh, answering your particular question on what are the most important things despite limitations uh, which have to do with the pandemic, Nas Dobr resumed its full-scale work of an independent uh, expert uh, community uh, and its relations with the ministries and public agencies on the qualification of uh, economics and management. So in December last year, we performed the full-scale uh, attestation of our National Financial University with uh, 43 experts involved, and I think it was quite successful. We began preparation for the beginning of accreditation in 2021, so we shaped our working groups of experts of 10 people for an independent audit of uh, general education university, so the work uh, should continue. We offer uh, workshops for NASDOBER experts on retraining, so we update them on changes in regulations and statutory documents for the higher professional education. Uh, Mr. Shukov, allow me to interrupt you. So we have the option of using the voting system. So let's ask those who listen to us uh, to express their opinion on what they think about uh, this uh, extra uh, accreditation system uh, in addition to the obligatory uh, uh, public system. So why while we are having this vote and we can continue, I'm sorry for interrupting you, so you started to work about the third most important priority area. Well, so this topic may appear new, but it's something like the public-private partnership. So at the government level, we would be more and more intention to shaping entrepreneurs' mindsets in the young people. And we are talking about uh, university students and uh, uh, high school students as well. And I think it makes sense because uh, to drive our economy, we need to develop entrepreneurship. And we pay a lot of attention to government programs, but without development in private entrepreneurs, we are not getting anywhere. 
наш добр вышел с инициативы, обратился к посвященному в школу России на безвозмездный цикл онлайн лекций и мастер-классов financial and economic literacy for um, high school students for grades 9 to 11. I think uh, at this age they are ready to perceive the type of information. And the lecturers for the master classes uh, as we propose would be uh, business people and experts in business education. Uh, so this initiative by Nas Dobr was approved and we concluded a contract uh, on cooperation with the All Russian Center for Development of Creativity and um, Humanity Technologies. And Sergei Pavlovich, uh, as far as I know, you have already begun this work and with you started with the lecture for 400 um, high school teachers and professors and they were interested in it and I believe it's an exciting uh, initiative for the school. Thank you, Mr. Zhukov. So, in this connection, I would like to ask our colleagues to take part in another voting and ask the question whether you believe the basics of entrepreneurship uh, should be taught at school or um, do you believe uh, the school's uh, curriculum is overloaded. And allow me to ask you another question. Uh, in the morning, Mikhail Andronov, president of Rus Energo, who graduated from other the uh, FizTech or Bauman uh, Technical University, so he said that today the education of uh, physicists, uh, mathematicians, uh, technical professionals, and managers, uh, well, is separated. So at university. Uh, students are only focused on technical disciplines and they are started to be trained as uh, managers at senior age. So uh, our professionals start to seek for grants from international universities. So if, according to Andronov, so if we would bring uh, entrepreneurship uh, training programs to the technical um, universities, so it would uh, upgrade uh, the quality and the level of our university. Well, I would agree with Mikhail Androlov. If we will look at our experience from 1990s, most of our bankers, of our successful bankers, so they graduated from physical and mathematical uh, departments, uh, different universities, and it may look strange because they didn't have any basic economic education, but there is something special about physical uh, education and physics and mathematics. So this uh, combination type of thinking. So if it would go together with a management uh, education, it could result in uh, some serious progress in uh, scientific and technical areas in industry and even in banking and uh, economic uh, sectors. Thank you so very much. And maybe another question. I would like to begin with a statement. Uh, last year, in 2020, despite the pandemic, uh, we saw a number of breakthrough events in business and management education. A number of Russian business schools, well, at least two business schools, uh, RANEPA and St. Petersburg schools of international management uh, were mentioned in the top uh, business and management education rating by financial uh, times. So they were listed as uh, 
top 100, which uh, was never the case before. And two more business schools, including Skolkovo, um, were eligible uh, for international accreditation. So Russian business education becomes more and more mature, so it's more and more focused on qualities. Mr. Zhukov, what would you like to wish all the uh, leaders and uh, managers of uh, business education schools, of those who uh, try to work uh, with management science, what would you like to wish them for the Russian management education to um, become flagship both in Russia and worldwide? Well, I'd like to wish them the same as to other, as to other Russians. We need to move back into offline. It's extremely important for a business education. Education, networking is a critical element, and I really hope we could be able to go back to this. But as you said, our universities, leading universities and business schools have improved their position in the global ranking. I'm sure, you know, I hope that this process would continue. Business education emerged in Russia in, on our term, and previously we didn't have any business education. Uh, to, so it emerged un, under our watch, and I hope that Nazobr will ensure the proper quality through the council, through the accreditation work that is underway. I really hope that we will continue to focus on quality rather than quantity. If I may, I would like to announce the results of the poll. The first question was on whether we need to complement state accreditation with accreditation from academic institutions. 63% said yes and 27% said, said no and 10% 10 people said they don't know. And the second question is whether we should need to teach entrepreneurship in school. So no said 38% and yes said 62%. So it's really great to see that our audience just like us, believes that entrepreneurial education, business education, needs to be done, that it's a critical component of education at the school level, university level. And I'd like to say a big thank you to those wonderful people who have participated in this debate on quality of Russia's business and management education. Thank you, Mr. Stepashin, and thank you so much to Alexander Shukov, who is here today in our studio, a leader of Nasdobr, an association that has been set up by the leading employers in Russia, a well-known statesman, Alexander Dmitrievich. Alexander Zhukov, thank you so much. We really appreciate you taking your time. Anything else? The last key takeaway, the last wish to the audience? A happy New Year. What do you mean? 2021? Or, I mean, we have two New Years. That's what we celebrate here in Russia. Well, I'm referring to 2021, you know. We really hope that this one will be much better than the outgoing one. Okay, as a sum up, I talked to many friends, to Russia's academia, despite everything, and despite uh, the uh, difficult preparations for this Gaida Forum, on January the 1st and the old New Year, we're celebrated with the same joy. And this even second uh, holiday, I mean the old New Year, was even 
a happier one. It was even more festive, as some friends told me. So I really hope that under your leadership, Nas Dobro will really do a lot of good for our country. We really want to accelerate our growth and our progress. Thank you. Colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, friends, comrades, thank you so much. I congratulate you once again on the holiday, traditional Russian holiday we had yesterday, the old Russian, the old New Year that we celebrated on December the 30th, uh, December the 13th, sorry, January the 13th.